Today, let's take a look at a company called Wasp. Wasp started off as a regular desktop 3D printing company using PLA and PETG plastics. Now, they've scaled up their printers and expanded to a wide variety of materials including clay, cement, and mud-based mortars. Two of the units they build fall under the category of architectural 3D printers. The Crane Wasp was used on this Tecla project. Here's a look at how truly expansive it is. The Delta Wasp 3MT is Wasp's iteration on a concrete 3D printer. It seems like for this print, they're not using any type of reinforcement. The printer isn't as massive as the Crane Wasp, so to print anything large, it must be assembled for multiple parts. They've experimented with many different patterns with which to build. As much experimentation as they've done with concrete, it seems this company favors a mud-based mortar for their large-scale 3D printing applications in construction. As with all 3D printing, the first layer is typically the hardest. For a good start, you need a flat surface, and every next layer will be built upon this initial surface, so it's absolutely critical to make it as flat as possible. Here's a look at some of the concrete prints accomplished by WASP. They pale in comparison to what the Crane Wasp is capable of. Here's an early video of Wasp testing out their mud and straw combination for printing. They've drawn creative influence from the natural behavior of a wasp in nature. Like the insect they share their name with, they plan on building shelters out of the materials available to them right on the ground. Wasp operates under a manifesto. The power of money and finance is based on the monopoly of production capacity. The WASP project works to make it public with a perspective of equal opportunities and equal knowledge to free creativity and boost economy from the bottom. WASP's dream is to print a healthy, beautiful, human-scale home with a cost that tends to be null. Inspired by the technique of mason wasps, the symbol of the group, the research is aimed at building a 3D printer to make clay houses. Earth is available everywhere in the world. It is cheap and easily malleable. Combined with other zero-mile local materials, clay can create printed buildings that last in time, that adapt to the territory, and that do not leave ruins behind once no longer used. Let's take a look at how they printed the Gaia house back in 2018. This was the first 3D printed house made of earth in the world. The foundation utilizes concrete, then they begin printing with the mortar and straw solution. This house has two windows, the top of which has a piece of wood that they can then resume printing on. The layering and shapes you see of the wall is not arbitrary. It's optimized for insulation and airflow. Some of these gaps will be filled with a chip-based insulation. Other gaps serve as ventilation so that if any water gets trapped inside, there will be enough air flowing for it to dry out. Trapped water in dark spaces leads to mold, so avoiding this leads to a much safer habitat for humans. A significant part of the construction of this house is automated. There are still a few people on site because at the top of this window, you need to place a flat board to resume the next layer, and other issues can come up during printing. Someone also must monitor the mixer and the pump to ensure material is continuously flowing. Similarly to some other projects we've seen, they've chosen to stucco the interior walls. Choices like this hide the 3D printed nature of the building, but they make it easier for people to move into these homes because it looks more similar to what they're used to. Of course the building needs a roof, so for its structural support, they insert eight vertical columns. Once again, they use the same chips of rice husk to insulate the roof. All of this is of course done manually. Construction automation will only come one step at a time, so it won't be like the trucking industry that could be completely demolished if self-driving takes over. What do you think about living in a circular 3D printed Gaia house like this one? It certainly may be quite different from what you're used to. Here's the Delta Big Printer that printed the Gaia house. It's later been replaced by the Crane Wasp. Like many other companies, after printing some initial projects, 
They had many tweaks they wanted to make to the technology, and they're now on their second iteration of an architectural printer that builds houses in clay. We have frequently discussed on this channel the false claims that have been perpetuated by the media about the 3D printed construction industry. Many people think a house can be built for $4,000 or $10,000. In reality, we've discovered the concrete that's currently being printed can cost three to four times as much as regular concrete, sometimes as much as 10 times the typical concrete mixture. Wasp is one of the few companies actually pursuing the absolute cheapest methods for shelter. Their architects are now tasked with the challenge of how to make a home out of dirt that is appealing to live in. As the industry of large-scale architectural 3D printing expands, I'd imagine some 3D printing enthusiasts might jump in. There are many similarities. You may even recognize this screen from your own 3D printer at home. It's the same one I have on my Perusa MK3. The latest initiative from Wasp, just announced March 1st, is the House of Dust. The House of Dust was created initially by Allison Knowles in 1978. A crowdfunding campaign to develop this concept in front of a museum has already reached 11,157 euros of its goal to 14,400 euros. With seven days left, maybe you'll help them reach their goal. I'll leave a link below in the description. Seeing the dimensions of the Delta Big, you may have been wondering how such a large printer could be assembled. They've engineered it so that it can be assembled with hand cranks. This method may seem labor intensive, but it's critical to remember that WASP's core mission is to develop housing at no cost. In order to achieve this extremely lofty goal, they need to make their technology as efficient as possible and as cost effective as possible. Using extra motors will need extra energy, which will increase the environmental impact of the technology. The methods they've selected have no emissions. Once assembled, the mechanics of the printer can be operated by a solar panel on site. A mixture of sand, clay, and straw gets loaded into this mixer at the optimal ratio, which then creates the mortar that they're printing with. Some may also refer to this combination of materials as an adobe mixture. It's been used for thousands of years historically. There are parts of southwestern America where you can still see the remains of homes built with this technology. It will be fascinating to see the longevity of these homes WASP is now printing. If done right, this mixture should become stronger as it weathers and dries out many times. Many tests can be done in a closed environment to assess the longevity, but in my opinion, only time can truly tell how long these buildings will last. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I continue covering the most cutting edge automated construction companies that are seeking to change the world. It's been incredible to see how much progress has been made by the companies I started speaking with years ago and how new companies are popping up all the time. I'm sure the future holds many new exciting projects like this one as WASP gets ever closer to their ultimate goal of providing wide-scale affordable housing.